I get asked a lot by clients of mine as I'm specifying ERVs that are ducted ERVs, like a Renew Air or a Brone. Um, I have a lot of people who've watched Matt Reisinger's channel and they come with a Zender um, and they find an option that is not one of those ducted ERVs. Uh, they find what's called a spot ERV. And I'm going to go over a couple of different types here and I'm going to explain why I almost never recommend them. So this is a video that I did when we were building our tiny lab uh, before the Proof is Possible tour across the country. I did not end up using this thing. This is the Panasonic Whisper Comfort ERV. And I was advised by Don Stevens, who is the superstar technical director over there, how to do surgery on this, to turn it into a small ducted ERV system because pressure imbalances between rooms are very important, as we're going to see in just a minute here. So this is a company that I recommend a lot for their air sealing uh, products. They they have all kinds of things that they import from Europe, which are very cool. Um, and I've worked with them a fair amount. I've used their products a ton. Uh, but I do not use their ventilation products that they distribute in the States. The, the main one being this Lunas. I'm not talking about this uh, Brink, uh, which is brand new. And I, I may talk about that down the line, but this Lunas system is something that a lot of people have found that they say, you know what, I'd like to at least talk about whether this is useful for me or not. So the way that these are meant to work is that they come in pairs. Uh, and I'm going to talk about another one, which is the Epica, uh, which is a new system that does heating, cooling, and ventilation in the same kind of style. But um, these come in pairs. There's one that goes on in one area and one that goes in another area. That's the E uh, E squared 60 and the E squared. And then this, e, this ego that they've got is a tiny little single. So it's got two fans built into that little tiny thing. You can see them right there. Um, so let's talk about the top of the line version that they've got, which is the E squared 60 or E260. I don't know how they're, they're saying it. So we start out at $1,300, same price point as an e a ducted ERV, like I was mentioning, um, not not the top of the line uh, Zender, which I, I don't recommend for other reasons, um, not to start any fights or anything, but you know we can keep on talking about this. Um, so $1,300, it comes in a pair. And the way that, first of all, you need to specify is you want one pair or two pairs. What they've got pictured here is two pairs of fans. Well, let's just start with one, just to kind of get the concept down. The interior cover, white standard cover, ooh, noise reducing cover, that should be a giveaway. Like this is a hole in the wall. It's coming directly from outside to inside with no turns. Noise reducing might be good, but they also have comfort screen with MERV 13 filter. Again, hole in the wall coming straight through. It's just a sleeve with a fan and a filter and things like that built into it. You can see the way that it's put together right here. So we've got the out outside uh, inlet. We've got some couplings. We have a, a couple of filters of some kind. It looks like activated charcoal and um, uh, like a MERV something, but it's probably not a MERV 13. The MERV 13 would go here because you're going to embed this in the wall. We've got the fan and then we've got the interior coupling and the trim. So when we've got this set up, uh, we have to choose the options. And you can see we start driving up the, the price here. Exterior grill, again, sound insulation. Like that sounds good. So we end up being somewhere in the $1,600 range for this thing, which is like, again, more than what um, the ERVs that I'm recommending are typically going to be in the range of, especially considering the performance of these. So the way that these are designed to work, and it says it right down here, is that they switch every minute or so. They're gonna, they talk to each other and they say, hey, I'm going to go out, you go in. And so they balance the home that way. And you get the uh, heat recovery that way. These are not energy recovery ventilators, meaning they don't have anything to do with humidity. They don't take humidity out of the incoming air. So if it's raining and it's 69 degrees outside, you're just going to get flooded with humidity. If it's very dry outside, 20 degrees and you know not snowing, it's going to be very dry. And so that's just something that you have to deal with. That's why I recommend ERVs over HRVs almost all the time. And there's a video that I've got about this specific topic. But the other thing that's a problem here is that the fact that they switch means you cannot use these this ERV solution as a bath exhaust because it's going to switch back. So it's possible that you might think theoretically, what if I had, you know, let's look at the airflows that it's got here. 
airflows are switchable 10 to 35 CFM. Now, it's possible that in a bathroom, if you had that thing on max and it was pumping 35 CFM of cold outdoor air in, that might help to dry out humidity that's being created when you're taking a steamy shower inside the, the bathroom. But one, you know, spot exhaust, the whole idea of it is taking the pollution that you're creating in the home out where it's created. This cannot do that because of that switching mechanism that it's got built into it. Also, for that price, $1,600, you're only able to get 35 CFM out of it. My home requires almost 200 CFM of ventilation based on the building, the people, and then also on the exhaust needs. And I, I would have to buy multiples of these. And I do have clients that end up having to do this because we don't have the room to run ductwork. So that MERV 13, I'd say is totally necessary. That sound insulation would be totally necessary. And you'd still have to come up with some way to do bath exhaust. Um, which by the way, at that point, when you do do that and they have a solution here, let's take a look. Where is it? Uh, they have an exhaust only fan. Yeah. Exhaust fan kit 15 to 60 CFM. It sounds like let's take a look. Nope. Nine to 35 CFM. If you install this, you do not have a balance system anymore. If you took 35 CFM and you put it through uh, an exhaust, you're now going to depressurize a home. And depending on how airtight that home is, it's going to have more and more of an effect. And I have a video on when that line of when we can't use bath fans anymore really hits. And I'm linking that, that video on screen now. Now, if you really want to have a spot HRV, meaning uh, air is being exhausted from a certain place and brought in at the same time, you can build it yourself. And that is proven in this video uh, by my buddy, Alex who built one that's a very efficient HRV, getting the recovery core in there. Like this is all made with just corrugated plastic. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he describes uh, how much it cost him to make and how exactly he did all this. That's totally doable. So I'm just saying you don't need to spend big bucks um, to do this. That being said, he his is very big, very powerful. So you would want to use smaller, like there's variations on this. His is uh, has got a lot of features that other DIY HRVs on YouTube do not have, but you can build these things with components that are very easily gettable. Let's also look at this Epica system, which is called the IO or AI, AIO. I'm not, again, there's like a lot of marketing speak going on here. Um, and this one, as you can see from the picture, is kind of like that Panasonic that I was talking about at the very beginning, the Whisper Comfort. It's got the inlet and the outlet really close to each other. First thing that should come to mind in, in the way that we normally uh, install ERVs is you put the intake and the outlet at least 10 feet apart from each other, because what you don't want is a little feedback loop happening. If you ask them, is that going to, should I be worried about feedback? What do you think they're going to say? They're going to say, no, no, don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, I, I'm worried about it. I'm a professional. I think about this stuff all the time. I test these systems and yeah, I would be worried about that. Number one. Number two, this thing does heating, cooling, and ventilation all in one. And it's supposedly a dehumidifier also. Again, I've said this before, there are no silver bullets in home performance. There is no easy way out. And the closer we come to something that seems to solve all our problems at the same time, I think the more worried we should be. Because that is very difficult to get all of those things to work correctly. It's the same as windows, right? We ask it to be insulated like a door, to be open and close, or excuse me, insulated like a wall, open and close like a door, and be see-through like it's not even there. That's a lot to ask. That's why windows are very, very expensive. So you can see this thing um, is a heat pump. It's got, a, you uh, can charge it with uh, R410A. It's got dehumidify mode, blah, blah, blah. We've got selectable, feel com configurable amounts of air. Uh, eight. It says eight foot external vents. They might be European, I'm not sure, uh, or Asian, but like eight inch, eight with a, the quote with two things on it is probably what they mean. And an available almost half inch of water column for external ducting, dampers, and louvers. So this seems very nice, um, but let's take a look at this real quick. So let's look at the heat pump specs. In cooling mode, this thing can move between 3,400 BTUs of heat out of your home and 15,000, like that's over a ton, that's a ton and a quarter. Um, but, and the nominal, the rated, uh, is going to be right in the middle of that. 
heating, you can see that we can do about the same on the high end. It can give you that, but only at 47 degrees outside. Once it gets real cold, that cuts in half. And then once it gets super cold, five degrees, which you're going to have in you know places like Vermont, um, Chicago, it, it goes down again. So when you really need the heat is when it's really cold. So be careful about that. There's, you know, like Mitsubishi, for example, just came out with a new upgrade to their um, hyperheat, which means that it'll work at 100% efficiency down to negative 10. And again, you always want to look at the specs because that number, of, they're, they're going to brag about the heating that you can provide at 47 degrees, which is really easy because there's a lot of heat in that air uh, outside. But um, you always want to look at these specs because you're going to, this is the design condition that you're going to want to have over here. Now, the ERV, it, they, they say this really weirdly. I've never seen this. The sensible recovery in BTUs per hour, I don't really know. Like I would have to think hard about how to interpret that into percent. Um, but let's just go over here and look at their um, their spec. So the ERV can run in 15, 25, or 40 CFM. Again, we're talking about um, in a small, uh, like a, a very small space, like a tiny home, like we used to live in 200 square feet. And I'll link a video on screen now. So that in case you haven't seen that, you can see that. But you need to ventilate that place by like 30 CFM minimum. And that replaces all the air in that tiny home once per hour if you've got 1800 cubic feet of interior volume, but it's worth it because you've got several people, you get all the building off gassing into that. That's why tiny homes are much more dangerous than big homes. I'm just going to put that out there park that you guys feel free to pick a fight with me uh, in the comments if you're a tiny home person. But um, the uh, efficiency here you can see is like, you know, 70%. Um, the latent, that's pretty high actually. Now the filter on this is a MERV-3 outdoor air coming, or excuse me, indoor air going out MERV-3. You can upgrade that to MERV-13. I don't know why you'd want to do that because you don't care about how polluted the air that's going out is. You do care about how polluted the air coming in is. So it does have a MERV-13 filter. That's very nice. Um, the leakage, this is like kind of interesting. Um, it's got 2.6% leakage in it. And I don't know, that's a very, I, I haven't seen that on any other systems. Uh, in their specs. So it's nice that they're telling us that that's um, that's high for a piece of equipment, frankly. The way that the code is written, you're allowed like four CFM of leakage, or 4%, that is. And 1% is supposed to be coming from the equipment itself. That is telling us that we're getting more than 50% of the leakage is coming from the equipment. So that sounds actually a little high. I'm not sure why they're telling us that. They didn't have to. The only other thing that I'd like to just point out here is that the airflow here is um, on the heat pump side between 160 and 290. And the filter is a MERV 3 on the heat pump. So you're going to have, let's say, max 40 CFM of dilution air and exhaust coming in and out really close to each other right there, right? I believe it pulls in from the bottom of it and then it exhausts around the sides. You can, there's an option to duct this thing. And I would always recommend doing that. But the whole reason you're buying this is that you don't have duct work. That's that's my problem with it, right? And then you've got this 290 CFM, you know, a full seven times more air that you're able to circulate around and you can't filter it at all because a MERV 3 filter, you could literally see through it. So that is why these systems, I think they promise a lot, but I just don't think that they really are going to deliver. Um, now, when you hack these systems and you were to take that that Epica unit and duct it, which is an option. And by the way, the price points on these things, I just want to make sure to revisit this because like we've got, uh, oh, here, right here, right there, $6,600 with the ERV. The ERV itself pulls $2,500 of that cost. That's much more expensive than a Brone or Renewer that I'm normally you know talking about. And I happen to have them right here in my studio, which is why I'm talking about them so much because they're like, you got the ECM motor, you get all the features of this, but not that expensive. And it's because of the incorporation of all of this together as one tool that you're going to get that price. Take from this what you will. Do your own research. Look around. There's new products coming out all the time, but I would, you know, there's some people who have been researching this and developing products around this for decades. And then there's people who are coming to this fresh. And I think like, generally, I'm a little mistrustful if you're coming into this as like a marketing 
uh, person. And you're like, oh, I see what the problem is immediately. Like, I don't even see completely what the problem is. And I talk about this nonstop. So questions below, comments, like, and subscribe. Tune in next time.